All right, this evening for our Tech 10, we're going to be having a presentation by Al. Uh, for field day, he gave us some prediction charts of what bands might be useful at what times. And so Al is going to review and kind of compare reality to prediction. Thank you, Al. <coughs> yeah, when I uh, originally talked with, uh, with Brian, I said, well, I ought to be able to do it in two slides. A hundred slides later, <laughs> no, we're, we're going to go through this kind of quick. First, I want to point out that I used an online uh, tool, and I reference material from this tool. I'm not going to try pronouncing the name, but you can read the call. All right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, what is this thing? Well, uh, VOCAP originated from the Voice of America, and it's a prediction program and it does high frequency only, basically from two megahertz to 30 megahertz. And it, you, you see this term thrown around, SSN. Well, SSN doesn't mean the smooth spot, sunspot number for the day. It is a 13 month average. And it's put together in a very specific way. Uh, on top of that, a few years ago, I think it was in 2016, the United States facility that was providing the smooth sunspot numbers that this program developed around stopped providing the numbers. So it switched to a, a, uh, an observatory in Belgium. And it's working, and it, it works pretty well. So uh, we're going to go through 80, 40, 20 and 15 meter bands. And I combined all the signals that we got in those bands into one number. Now I did it for all of the call zones. However, when we did the prediction, there are two tables that you get to select from. And I understood the table that had W1, oh, I know where that is, and the W2. No, it didn't have W2, but it had W4 and W6 and W5. And it had a whole bunch of other things that were foreign entities. So I selected that table. I boiled that down to just the W stuff. And what we're going to look at, let's take a look at the next slide, please. OK, we went through pretty much all that. All right, so uh, the horizontal across the top are UTC hours. It starts at 1, which is 0 to 1, and ends at 24, which is 23 to 24. So I took all the times that uh, we had logged, the calls were logged, and I put them in those buckets. Uh, and the vertical are just some of the US call zones because I didn't have the time, I didn't want to take the time to try to figure this mess out to do all of the U.S. calls and ones. Next slide, please. Uh, what do the colors mean? The colors, if you see a red, it means you have 100% probability in that slot. And so on down to white, which says you have 0%. Gray is kind of a unique color. It says there's something could happen, maybe. <laughs> And we actually will demonstrate that as we go through the charts. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, so here's 80 meters. And you can see W6 is showing quite strongly all the way through. And we, we did a number of good contacts on 80 meters, pretty much where they were saying would. And uh, W5, we had a few in there also. We had a couple on W4s, all right? Uh, and at the top, I didn't point this out, but it, the TX, that's us, that was located at Blue Canyon Airport. And you can go in there and actually select where you're going to transmit from and where you want to receive to. And there's another feature that's pretty interesting because they have all the big gun DXers, <laughs> and you can actually turn them on if you're trying to reach somebody with your QRP rig, <laughs> and it'll give you the probability of your success. <laughs> but I didn't play with that. And uh, SP 
is short path. You can go short path or you can tell it to do a long path if you want. And you can add gray zone enhancement, which I didn't play with. All right, let's go to 40. Okay, 40, you notice the gray and the W6s. And we did a lot of activity in W6 land in the gray area. And we had a couple of contacts where we shouldn't have had any. Three. And on to 20 meters. And again, you can see there's some gray activity there. But you can see that it pretty much matches where we do the biggest uh, efforts. I know Dustin and his friends were very excited because apparently they tried some of this during field day. And they were seeing that there was some correlation. All right, and the last one is 15 meters. Oh, and there we get a bunch of weight. <laughs> All right. And uh, to wrap this thing up, let's go to the last slide now. I think it works pretty well. If you wanted to, if you wanted to make a plan as to what to do a couple of months from now, you can do that. You can figure out when you want to work what bands and to what locations. And there's some interactive charts that you can play with, and you can watch it change as you move the location or your signal strength. There's a lot of stuff you can play with. And you can modify antennas. I basically did dipoles, but you can put beams in there. You can see what that will do for you, too. Um, I did say that we, we did get some, some uh, contacts where we were predicting none. And when you look at it, for what I showed you, we had 482 contacts represented in these charts. Out of the 482, 18 of them were in the no contact area, which says 464 fit the profit, uh, prediction, which I think is pretty high. Around 96 percent. Yeah, Brian. Did you find that like FT8 or other digital modes? I didn't play with that at all. There, there's so much you can do. I didn't. But I was sneaking was this in the honey in between the honeydews. Nothing was, be nothing was obvious that uh, FT8 was. I didn't didn't try that. All right. Yes, uh, Jim. Uh, you know, when we first got going at the top of the uh, event. 15 meters was open there for that while. We made those East Coast contacts, which is very rare for the 10 years I've been doing this. Is that where a lot of that came from? The 15 uh, meters was that first little window that came up? Client, could you back up to the 15 meters? If I can, I didn't catch that time stamp on that. There we go. Uh, the W1s didn't show. The W0s, I didn't see any W1 okay. showing. I'm 15 meters. Okay, the W zeros are the ones that showed up. Any other questions? Good job. Yes. Could you go over where the different uh, W zones are? Uh, I didn't bring a map, but W one is like uh, Massachusetts, Maine, Rhode Island. Uh, W4 would be Alabama, Louisiana, Florida. Uh, I think five will pick up Texas and Tennessee. Texas, Texas. And uh, six, of course, is us. Okay. And, zero is and zero is kind of in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Here you go.